During the Gilded Age, wealthy Americans had more money than they knew what to do with, but they couldn't become royalty due to the American Constitution. However, they found a way around it by paying top-dollar dowries for their daughters to marry into the British aristocracy, giving rise to the dollar princesses. As America's nouveau reach emerged, the established wealthy elites turned their noses up at them, like the Vanderbilts who went from poor farmers to one of Manhattan's wealthiest families known for their extravagant taste. Meanwhile, the British aristocracy, once the pinnacle of wealth and status, saw their fortunes rapidly eroding as their houses crumbled and they couldn't afford repairs, while rich American fathers were willing to pay exorbitant dowries for their daughters to marry this illegible bachelors and guy nobla titlis. The solution to America's nouveau reach being ostracized by the old rich was for their daughters to marry into British nobility, gaining titles and access to exclusive circles. Meanwhile, British aristocrats were eager to restore their fortunes without working and gladly accepted enormous dowries in exchange for marrying American heiresses. An entire matchmaking industry emerged, with both sides profiting from these marriages, although many would later view it as morally bankrupt. On her wedding day, Consuelo Vanderbilt, daughter of William Vanderbilt, found herself in tears and alone as she was forced to marry the ninth Duke of Marlborough while both she and the Duke were in love with other people. The extravagant wedding, which was extensively covered by the press, provided the Duke with the funds necessary to maintain Blenheim Palace and carry out renovations. Winston Churchill, the leader who guided Britain through World War II, was actually the son of a dollar princess. His mother, Lady Randolph Churchill, married into the British aristocracy with a massive dowry, and this privileged upbringing likely played a role in his political success. Many other influential figures in 20th century British history were also the children of these wealthy American girls, as the trend of the aristocracy marrying into wealth continued. The dollar princesses, coming from the luxurious homes of America, found themselves in a completely different world when they moved into centuries-old British houses. Their attempts to modernize their estates were met with resistance from the traditional British nobility, who saw them as outsiders and rejected them from their social circles. These women had sacrificed their homes and families in America only to be snubbed on the other side of the Atlantic. Meet Mary Leiter, the Chicago-born dollar princess who became the Viceroy of India. With her privileged upbringing and extensive education, she captured the heart of Baron George Curzon, and ascended to the highest title a woman could hold in the British Empire. Consuelo Vanderbilt, coerced into marrying the Duke of Marlborough, felt like a mere puppet during her wedding preparations. The marriages between American princesses and British noblemen were often arranged, with guidebooks serving as a who's who to help secure profitable and hopefully somewhat happy unions. While some girls were eager to marry into nobility, many, like Consuelo, were forced into miserable and lonely marriages by their parents. In the TV show Downton Abbey, Cora Crawley is a dollar princess who married into British nobility with a massive dowry from her wealthy Ohio family. Her character is based on the real Lady Almina, who married the 5th Earl of Carnarvon and funded the restoration of the house where the show was filmed with her dowry. In their quest to reclaim their fortunes, struggling British noblemen turned to advertising themselves as eligible bachelors in publications like The Titled American. These ads listed their incomes, estates, professions, and other family members, 
providing American girls with a modern-day dating service to find their British royalty match. Princess Diana, the People's Princess, was descended from a dollar princess named Fanny. Fanny's marriage to James Roach, the son of the first Baron Fermoy, brought wealth to the family, ultimately benefiting Princess Diana's advocacy for the poor. Consuelo Vanderbilt's wedding dress was nothing short of extraordinary, with every detail meticulously leaked to the press by her mother. And she was not alone in her opulence, as dollar princesses like Mary Leiter adorned themselves in the most lavish attire money could buy, including a gold dress adorned with peacock feathers designed by the renowned House of Worth. One of the dollar princesses, Winneretta Singer, married a French prince not once, but twice. However, both marriages were unconventional. The first marriage was annulled, and the second marriage was a platonic union due to Winneretta's lesbian orientation and the prince's homosexuality. The dollar princesses came to the rescue of Britain's declining aristocracy and economy. Their dowries injected billions of dollars into the British economy and created numerous jobs, but despite their wealth, many British families snubbed them. Nancy Langhorn Shaw, a girl from Virginia, married into the Astor family and became Lady Astor, adopting the British aristocratic lifestyle. In 1919, she made history by becoming the second woman elected to the British Parliament, despite being an American. These American girls, known as Dollar Princesses, not only brought wealth to their noble husbands, but also played a crucial role in restoring dilapidated palaces. For instance, when Alva Vanderbilt married the Duke of Marlborough, her dowry became instrumental in saving Blenheim Palace from further decay. The selling of American girls for titles was eventually seen as a form of slavery. Frances Work's father strongly opposed her marriage into nobility, recognizing that British aristocrats were simply using their massive dowries for personal gain, while Americans were sacrificing their wealth to prop up Britain's economy for the sake of artificial status. A better solution was needed for the acceptance of nouveau reach daughters. 